School Culture and Climate by me, Macy Mitchell. Let me just say, wow, there was a lot of stuff to talk about, so I'm going to try to squeeze this in in the five to seven minutes. The school vision, it has to be a shared vision statement, not just the leader's input, but also the input of all staff members, and it has to be frequently talked about. To continuously build and progress toward the, this vision, the steps are first, plan. You have to develop a plan to make improvements, then do or implement the plan you created, then study it and evaluate the impact it is making, whether it is a positive or negative impact. Then you have to adjust and make changes if something's not working or keep going forward with what you are doing. Students need this kinds of change. When making changes, you need to continuously ask yourself, how does this advance our work toward the vision? That way you stay on track. Also, you need to continuously use data as a resource when you are trying to make changes. Use the data to collabor collaboratively reflect and stay on course if it's working or adjust if needed. The leader's role with creating the vision is to use many of the resources available or the data to help create the right vision for the school. Also, the leader must be the first model of the vision. They have to follow up on what is actually taking place. They have to make sure it's aligned with state and local policies. They have to make sure it's clear to everyone. And then they have to recognize and celebrate when things are moving forward. There are many different influences on a school's culture. First, the leader, but also past cultures of a school can influence the culture it has today because it's built up over time and the culture influences literally everything in the school. The teacher's attitudes, the way students learn, the way administration handles different situations, and many other things. But, but the amount of support from the leaders, whether that be a principal or a teacher, is necessary for the students to succeed or they will slowly fall behind. And in order for the support to be beneficial, the teachers will have to make some changes since they are the ones with the students every day. They have to make positive changes in order to be successful. And to have a positive culture, there has to be a sense of purpose between everyone, positive norms that happen every day, celebration of student accomplishments, and there just has to be joy and humor for everyday activities. Uh, to build the culture, um, building the different norms, attitudes, beliefs, behaviors among everyone in the school, and especially as a newcomer to a school, trying to figure out that culture is so important. They need to figure out the culture that, culture that everyone shows and the hidden culture. Um, they need to know that hidden culture um, to figure out the way those people do things around that school. And depending on the open and the hidden culture, that all affects the way people think, the way they act, and the way they teach. And as newcomers or influential teachers and administrators, those people must act first in a positive direction before the hidden or sometimes the negative culture takes over. When trying to change the culture, first, don't get stuck in the negative culture. Help be part of the change that is trying to happen. The need for more desirable qualities than the existing unhealthy ones is crucial in these times. And as a newcomer, don't get sucked into the negative culture and don't be afraid to stand out or speak out. When trying to reculture a school, it's all about new beginnings, new starts, new changes, new visions, new ways in the school. When reculturing a school, uh, the outcomes you are looking for are problem solving from teachers and students, data sharing and analysis between administration and teachers, shared decision making, which makes everyone feel included, and distributed leadership which takes a load off the principal and sharing those leadership responsibilities with multiple people will level out the work and the stress level of making changes in the school. Comprehensive school reform is a process for schools to develop a collaborative culture, quality professional development, and leadership. The work done is to produce improved outcomes for all students with an emphasis on the needs of students with disabilities in general education classrooms. In order for this to happen, many steps have to be taken. First, discussions have to happen about where the school wants to go between everyone. Second, a team has to be formed of leaders. Then, those leaders have to examine all the data of the students' performances. And with that data, they have to determine the cap current capacity of the school. 
The school capacity is the collective power of the full staff to improve student achievement school-wide. Once that is decided, the leaders explore the options for change and then share those options with the staff to see any reaction to those ideas or other changes that, need, that might need to happen. And once everyone is on the same page, professional development toward those changes need to occur. And in order for those changes to happen, collaborative professional development needs to occur. These professional development sessions focus on practices that improve student outcomes, which is what every school shoots for. Teachers collaborate their beliefs and work together to build practices that will be best for their students. These practices need to be school-based. The teachers must follow up on what is actually happening and seeing if it's helping or if it's hindering students, and they all need the support they can get from the school administration. The only barriers to these collaborative professional development sessions is that it is time consuming and it is expensive. And also not everyone wants to collaborate. People like to do their own thing even if it's not the best way to do it or if it's the best for the students. And if everyone is doing different practices, no one is going to get the support that they need for their changes. And lastly, here are all of my references and honestly there's a lot more I could have talked about from these articles, but these were the main takeaways that I got.